Reviving a Forgotten Cooker. The Solar Sizzler. It was a simple but powerful parabolic solar cooker. Hasn't been made in 15 years. I decided to bring it back in a DIY friendly version because it's not made anymore and no one seems to make anything like it, probably for the past 10 or 15 years. And I see so many benefits in this, it's not even funny. It feels like a huge loss to the solar community that these aren't made anymore or anything like it. Super awesome in its time though. Probably ahead of its time, so I'm bringing it back. Let me show you the specs of each. Pro versus DIY. First four, exactly the same. 36, 36, 2.25, and 90 plus percent reflectivity. I'm also going to be showing you how to make this fully adjustable burner stand that I use. I am super happy with how this thing is working. I'll be showing you how it works, how I'm recreating it, and how you can make your own. They're both very detailed builds, so everyone should be able to make it after you watch those. This is what they offer us online these days. Way too big, too heavy, and too powerful. Awesome. And by the way, if you don't need quite the boil, but you need a simmer, just pull the collector back a couple inches, and that'll give you kind of a low heat. It's a very easy build, and I'll show you in the second half of the video. But first, let me show you what this thing can do. Let me cook a bunch of things, just so you can see exactly how good this little dish really is. Okay, this is the first test. I haven't tried it yet. Kind of nervous. Hope it works. Oh yeah, look at that. You think it's working? I do. Look how good that came out. Another awesome grilled cheese. Totally cool. 8.30 to 9 in the morning again, this time in a steel pan. Nice and golden brown. Awesome. Really, really good. Oh man, is that cool. Keep in mind as you're watching this, all the footage was taken mid-October, either in the morning or late afternoon. It's working perfect. Yeah, these are totally done. I don't want to like totally cook them, but one more time, what the heck. I'm not opening that. You don't want the grease to get on this thing, so. That was just an extra five minutes or so to kind of crisp them up like that. But they were done probably at least five minutes ago.
wait, they're done. One more time, and then the build's coming right up. For both the stand and the collector. I like them crisp just like that, so I'm hoping the other side. Oh yeah, beautiful, that's even better than the first. That's a perfect burger to me right there, absolutely perfect, look at that. If you want to make like a super effective little solar cooker that you'll have a blast using, go for this one. Let me take a quick check under there. Perfect, it's right on. So this will be super hot. All right, check this out. Drop it up here. This. Absolutely beautiful. And check out the sky. Actually, kind of a lot of clouds. Okay, I just flipped it. Looks good. Super hot. And I think it's done right now. Unless you want the crispy sides to it, which I do. So I'm going to let it cook maybe for maybe as much as another three to five minutes a side. But it's basically done right now. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. This thing works absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, check that out. It's hands down the best solar cooker I've ever made. Probably even the best solar cooker I've ever used. That includes the professional models. And with a rolling boil of water like this, you can cook almost anything. You could throw in potatoes or, you know, whatever you want to boil. Tons of things you can cook when you boil. Here's a few tips on using it. Wear sunglasses, stand to the side of it, don't remove the lid when the pan is on the burner, and only use a microfiber cloth to clean it. And you should be set. A few benefits, it's small, thin, lightweight, easy to store, and very portable. Mounts on a tripod, so it's basically effortless tracking of the sun. Only takes 10 seconds to adjust anyway, every 10 to 15 minutes. The setup and takedown only takes about a minute. Cooks like a traditional stove burner on medium to medium high, pretty much year round. Cooks in as little as 5 to 10 minutes, so there's no long wait times. You don't have any boil over issues because the unit is beside the burner, not under it like a lot of them. And it's basically just very practical, even works good on partly cloudy days. For reference, this is the only type I ever see for sale anymore. The ones that are way too big and way too hot. Like two to three times the power that you need for normal everyday cooking. It's like using the large burner on your stove on high every time you cook. Okay, let's do this. Okay, now this half of the vid is going to be the parts lists and the builds for both the dish and the stand. You just need three pins, one for the focal point, one for the vertex, and one for the upper part of the fin. You set it up like this, 
pop the upper part of the fin pin out, stick a pencil in there, and then keeping the piece of string on the left hand side completely straight, just slide that string along the top tube as you're moving the pencil over from left to the right on the screen. And the pencil should end at the vertex. The string should be totally straight from the pipe down and back up when you're at the vertex point, and it should be more angled when you're at the upper part of the fin. From the upper part of the fin to the corner of the cardboard should be about three inches, and from the vertex pin to the bottom should be three quarters of an inch. Then just cut out the first fin, which will be the pattern piece, draw 31 more, cut those out, and you'll have your 32 fins. Then just lightly sand them down and you're good to go. I'll also show you a shot from a previous video I did where I was also drawing a fin, except it was one, it was a collector with an 18 inch focal point. So the focal point and the vertex are only 18 inches apart. And in that shot, I was able to get the entire, the entire thing so you can see exactly what, I, what we're doing here. First thing I did was lay out the cardboard, then I glued it and pressed it. Let that dry overnight. Then I added the four 5 inch pieces at the top and the bottom of both sides to make it an exact square, 40 by 40 inch square. Alright, then cut the corners off. I measured 11 inches by 11 inches and made the cut on the four corners. Next thing I did was drilled a hole right in the center of the backing and inserted a little piece of copper pipe. It's one and a quarter inch long, half inch wide. And glue that in with liquid nails. You could also just use a copper pipe coupler if you wanted to. From there we just start laying the fins. And you're going to want to brace the fins with something called 3 8 inch square wood dowel. At first I was being lazy and just used random pieces I had of scrap. But ultimately I grabbed the rest of it, cut it down into exact two inch lengths. All you need is two inch lengths, one on either side. Glue that and the fin down with the Elmer's glue. Just one small bead of glue on the underside of the fin does the trick. By the way, and this is very important, remember to cut a quarter inch off the front of each fin. That allows us to maintain the continuity of the parabola curve. Then when you're done, let that dry overnight. Then the next thing I did was added those little square or rectangular pieces at the end of the fins all the way around to give it kind of a circular look. Alright, the next thing is to add the back brace and the center hardware. The back brace is just a 12 by 12 inch quarter inch piece of plywood. I glued that on with liquid nails. That's all you need for the hardware right there. One three inch long bolt with a wing nut and two one and a quarter inch washers. Along with a plywood disc. You can make that with a hole saw. Just drill, take a two and three quarter inch hole saw, drill into a piece of quarter inch plywood and sand that piece down. It's usually the scrap, but we'll use it for the front brace. Then take the circle of plywood, cover it with the liquid nails and press it down on the center. If it doesn't lay flat, use some sandpaper and kind of sand it out until that piece of plywood lays flat before you glue it. Then all you do is drop the bolt on and you're good to go. Now just drop it on the tripod and you're set. Now all we have to do is the poster board triangles and the mirror sticker triangles. And that's really easy to do. Then to do the poster board triangles, just do them like this. Like that. And like this. And to do the mirror sticker triangles, like this. By the way, before you do the mirror stickers, before you start on this very last part, make sure you have some plan for covering this whole thing up. 
I just bought like a table cover. It's like a piece of plastic you get at Walmart for a dollar. Mainly meant for tables, obviously, but it totally covers this thing. Either that or some plan to put it up against a wall or something where you're 100% sure that it won't get any sun on it. And then lastly, we'll just use square pieces around the outside. Six by six inch square pieces. So cut those mirror stickers down into four pieces, four equal pieces, and lay them around the outside like this. Then all you do is stick them on there, peel off the front covers, and you're done. It's totally done. Here's the tripod I chose. 15 pound max load. The collector itself is only 6.8 pounds, but you want to leave yourself some room. Alright, let me give you a quick rundown of the stand so you know how to build it. Starting with the burner grate, that just fits in there. This is grooved and it's got the little edge pieces right there. I think the ring itself is six and a half, but then from end to end it's like eight and seven, eight inches. So it fits right in perfectly to these burner grates. You just set it right in the groove all the way around. Plenty of room, plenty of play, gravity holds it in there and it won't move. It's never fallen out and I'm pretty rough with it. It just sort of sits in there. So that works out good. This is 89055, four bolt flower pot ring, Panacea flower pot ring. And uh, I can't remember the model number on this one. It's really long, but I'll put it in the description section and in the video itself. So you just bolt this on to this little two by three block of wood, four inches long. And then you just use a tube strap, three quarter inch tube strap around there with these big fat screws that go almost all the way in. So tighten those as much as you possibly can. And two of them usually works, but if you want to add another one, there's definitely room. So you got that. Then it's just these concrete form stakes, these steel concrete form stakes with the holes every three inches or so. Pretty popular item. You can get them at Home Depot and Lowe's in all lengths. But go with the two 36 inch ones and then you can bolt it right here with those bolts we talked about. Overlap it about a foot. I just put it down in the ground six inches. That's all that this stand needs to hold. You know, I can really push on that good and it never moves. It'll shake a little bit like that, but it never falls forward. So it's good. So if you don't have the hard soil, maybe just throw a cinder block or two in front of it. That's one idea. Or a five-gallon bucket full of sand or just something like that, you know, a couple of sandbags. Just something so it can't pull forward. Or you could rope it back with, like, tent rope and some stakes, kind of with the tensioners, and pull it back if you do it here, and it won't hit the focal point. If you're afraid about the wood and the focal point, I've never had a problem, honestly, but if you're worried about that, just wrap it in some heavy-duty tin foil. Then the, the light will just uh, reflect off. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And uh, I guess that's about it. I'll put all the details again in the, uh, the deal, and that's cool. Oh, another way you could do it is just quick creep, by the way. You could put some quick creep in the ground or, you know, something like that. You could also, even if you want to make a portable, get a five gallon bucket, fill that with third or half full of quick creep, and put that in. Then, you, then it's actually portable. You could move it around. To get this in the ground, I just use a hammer, by the way. I just bang on that with a regular standard hammer about 200 times to get it in six inches that's how hard the soil is out here so pretty cool it works out good really neat oh one more thing remember this thing is adjustable so if this seems too high for you don't let that stop you because you can put this thing like a whole foot down about here and then it's just about the height of your kitchen stove burner it might be an inch or two higher but it's right in the range so it looks about the same, feels about the same. And then you just have to lower the uh, legs to their lowest setting on the tripod. And it still works out. Since it's just a three-foot dish, you can still angle it all the way without the edge hitting the ground or anything. You'll have clearance at two or three inches, even at the lowest level. So it works out really good.